These lower calorie chocolate chip cookie skillets are one of my go-to treats when I want a little something sweet, but I don't want to blast through 1.7 billion calories. These are about half of the total calories of a normal cookie skillet, and if you cut it into four pieces, each serving comes in at 237 calories. I've got a cakey version that is a bit fluffier, a chewy version that is more cookie-like, and even a chocolate chip brownie version. Let me show you how to make them. I make many of my baked goods using oat flour. It's what I always have in my pantry, and it can be an easy gluten-free option for those who need it. If you wanted to use wheat flour for this recipe, I'm sure you could with no issues. I've never tested it, but I have no reason to believe that it won't work. To make the oat flour, all I do is put rolled oats into the blender and turn it on high until it is processed down into a flour. I'll usually blend up a bunch and store it in a container to put into the pantry for later use. The recipes for the cakey version and the chewy version are the exact same with the exception of a bit of baking soda for leavening. To make it, place a large bowl over a scale and add in 75 grams or two thirds of a cup of oat flour and 20 grams or just over two tablespoons of starch. Corn starch, arrowroot starch, tapioca starch, they all work the same. Next, add in 20 grams or just over two tablespoons of powdered peanut butter. This is something that will help give you a better texture. If you don't wanna buy it, you can just use regular peanut butter or leave it out, but I think it's better with it in. Follow that up with a little pinch of salt, and if you wanna make the cakey version, half of a teaspoon or two grams of baking soda. Again, if you want the chewy version, leave the baking soda out, everything else stays the same. Mix all of those dry ingredients together until they are well combined and no clumps remain. If you decide to use wheat flour instead of oat flour, you'll need 95 grams of flour to replace the oats and starch. I add the starch with the oat flour to make it more closely match the composition of wheat flour. Now for the wet ingredients, get out another bowl and add in one egg yolk. I've tried making this with the whole egg and it's not nearly as good. It dilutes the sweetness and leads to a gummy texture. If you're saying, but what am I supposed to do with this egg white now? Feed it to the dog, I don't care. Figure it out. Next, add in 113 grams or a half of a cup of unsweetened applesauce. This is our replacement for butter to add moisture and the natural sweetness of the apples will help to flavor it as well. Then you can dump in 60 grams or one fourth of a cup of maple syrup and four grams or one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mix everything together until well combined. Now that your wet and dry ingredients are ready, you can combine the two and mix to form a batter like dough. When the dry is now wet, you can toss in 30 grams or two tablespoons of chocolate chips and give it one more quick stir. Get out your baking dish and spray it lightly with oil. I'm using an eight by eight inch square, an eight or nine inch cast iron skillet will also get the job done. Pour the batter into the baking dish and spread it, shake it, bang it on the counter, do whatever you need to do to get an even layer in your dish. Then you can top it with an additional 15 grams or one tablespoon of chocolate chips and it is ready for baking. This one is the cakey version since I added the baking soda. I also made a chewy version for comparison's sake, but I'm not gonna bore you with the process since it's exactly the same thing. If you feel like you need to watch it, just rewind this video and close your eyes when the baking soda comes out. These are going to go in a 325 degree Fahrenheit or 162 degrees Celsius oven for 10 to 12 minutes and bake until they are set in the center. And look at that, by the power of movie magic, they are finished just a few seconds later. You can pull them from the oven and allow them to cool for a minute or two on the counter before you cut into them. These are very easy to make and will be done in under 30 minutes with ease. There was a stretch where my roommates and I were eating one of these each night most days of the week. They both liked the cakey version better, but I lean towards the chewy one myself. You'll have to experiment for yourself to see which one is preferable to you. These are a good alternative to the microwave chocolate chip protein cookie from last December if you don't want to buy a tub of casein. If each of these cookie skillets is split up into four servings, each serving will have 237 calories and 6.5 grams of protein. Here I'm showing the cakey version. The baking soda in the mix provides a slight bit of lift to create a lighter, more pillowy texture. The chewy version is much more dense and flat since we didn't use any leavening agents. The butter and sugar used in real chocolate chip cookies is what gives them their unique texture and flavor. Replicating this in a more macro-friendly way is nearly impossible, but by using things like applesauce, we can get something that is at least taste adjacent to the real thing. I know when I make chocolate chip cookies, I'll eat 10 of them at a time, so having recipes like this one to serve as a replacement is a better choice for me when it's not a special occasion. Now let's talk chocolate chip brownie version real quick. This recipe is practically identical to the cakey version of the chocolate chip cookie skillet, except instead of the 20 grams of powdered peanut butter, you'll use 20 grams of cocoa powder. Everything else remains exactly the same. Use the same egg yolk, applesauce, syrup, and vanilla, mix everything together, add some chocolate chips to the batter and on top, and then bake it at 325 Fahrenheit or 162 Celsius for 10 to 12 minutes. Once set in the center, you can pull it from the oven, and this version cut into four servings has 234 calories and five grams of protein. Each of these three recipes are published on my website and they are linked in the description below. Here's the deal. A real chocolate chip cookie skillet made with lots of butter and sugar is better than these are. I'm not gonna bullshit you and pretend that it's just as good. Only a true dunce would think that. But by my quick math, a regular cookie skillet of this size would clock in just north of 2,000 calories. So saving over 1,000 calories while still getting an enjoyable treat is a fair trade every once in a while for me. I'll see you cats on the flip-flop. Goodbye.